Good morning and good afternoon. Welcome to the Weekend Wellness Hour show. I am very excited to have Will Rod Rodriguez join us today. And he is someone I met through another person I had interviewed earlier this year, Leora Leon. She introduced me to Will and his wife, Karen, who is unable to make it here today, but they have this podcast called The Skeptic metaphysicians. And I was very fascinated by this topic and what they are doing to help promote this topic and bring information to the world. But Will's story actually began in the TV world with NBC Telemundo. And I'll let him share his background and what his do what he's doing right now with all of his projects. But thank you so much for joining us today, Will. Thank you for having me. I'm excited that someone's excited to have me. <laughs> yeah. Well, you, you're a very different type of guest than I've had before, especially talking about the metaphysical world. And But that's not how you started. You kind of started in a real world, well, <laughs> television world. So why don't you tell us a little bit about that story? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you're right. I'm very much, I'm deeply, deeply rooted in the what they call the 3D world, right? The mm -hmm. physical world, the, yeah. the scientific, pragmatic uh, points of view. Uh, and in fact, thought for many, many years that this type of thing was just all hooey. Right? Yeah. Who, who really believes that when we die, we, we live on or that there are people who can actually speak to the people who have passed, who, has, who have crossed over or mm -hmm. people who can read your minds or, you know, astrology for me was uh, something I read in the newspaper every Sunday and, and laughed at like, yeah, they could, this could be anybody, that kind of thing. Right. Mm -hmm. Uh as you mentioned, I'm in the TV world. I'm a producer, a television mm -hmm. television producer. And uh, I've been, since I was a kid, my dad was really interested in all the UFOs and the Bigfoots and the, all that kind of stuff. So I got introduced to the world that is seems incredible at a very young age. But I never really followed through with it until my probably early 20s when uh, I realized that I didn't really have a belief system. Mm -hmm. uh, so I started diving into all kinds of religions, um, Buddhism and um, Catholicism, and just you name it, I dove into head first because I'm just that kind of guy as a producer. Yeah. My, my job is to dive into things and explore them completely. So I did. And I found a religion called Wicca, which is okay. actually white witchcraft. But um, a lot of people have a, a misconception that Wicca is devil worship and things like that. Um, and that witchcraft is terrible, is bad. And um, I found that it was the opposite. It was a beautiful religion, very, very old religion, but it opened up my eyes to that woo world, if you want to call it that. Mm -hmm. So uh, I became fascinated by it because I didn't really believe it, but I wanted to find out why people would believe this kind of thing and how they could possibly get to a mindset where they would believe it. So I dove into it. I took Reiki energy um, healing classes and I did mm -hmm. past life regressions and did all that kind of stuff. And for a while I was like, mm, not getting it <laughs> uh, until uh, one day. Um, so it's really my search was, was I needed physical proof. I need to, I need to be able to, as a scientist, I need to touch it, taste it, know that it's real. I can't just take anything by, by faith. Mm -hmm. um, so it wasn't until I took Reiki class, a Reiki certification class, it came about because I, th this store I used to go to all the time had these Reiki circles on the weekends. And you sit in a big circle and practitioners would come around you with your eyes closed and they, med they have you go through meditation and they give you Reiki in a big circle. And um, I started at first not feeling anything, but after a while, I was like, well, you know, maybe, maybe I'm not giving this a shot. So I figured I'd give a tune, get attuned is what they call it. So I went to the class and uh, they're teaching us all the hand positions and all the theory behind it and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And then they had someone lying on a massage table and two by two, we would be taken into, into another room to be attuned, which means you're being aligned to this universal energy, this frequency. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, while those two were being attuned, the rest of us would practice putting our hands in different hand positions on the person that's lying on the massage table. Okay. Uh, and as people came out of the room from being attuned, uh, they would then put go back to putting their hands on, practicing the hand positions. And everyone, you go, oh, 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 like they can feel this thing coming through their hands. And I'm going, oh, boy, here we go, right? So, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, so my turn came to be attuned. I went to the 
room and it was very dark and uh, music was playing and we had to be on, on our knees and they closed, uh, we closed our eyes and you feel someone doing something over our head and saying mm-hmm. something and all that kind of stuff like that. And I'm just thinking, geez, what the heck did I get myself into? Yeah. So it was over. I felt no different, nothing. Mm-hmm. I was like, okay, whatever. Mm-hmm. So I went back uh, to the massage table and then and put my hands back onto the person that was on the table. And oh my gosh, was I blown away. What I thought was complete hooey yeah. was something that changed my life completely because I actually yeah. felt energy coming mm-hmm. out of the palms of my hands, something that I've never felt before. There was no reason for it to happen other than something changed inside me that I didn't, I didn't realize. Mm -hmm. So at that moment, that's when I knew, okay, this is physical. I feel this is an actual change. So there's something here. And that made me start thinking, hmm, if this is real, then what else in this space is actually real? Mm -hmm. And that launched my journey of discoveries, what I call it. Yeah, that's incredible. And what a neat experience, because kind of like you, I've come from a very scientific background and it's great that you had that experience. Now, I'm curious, when you practiced again, could you still feel that energy coming out of you? Did it stick and did it hold? Because that's that's a big factor in really it proving right? it to yourself. Yes. Yeah, yeah. It, it is not only repeatable it, mm-hmm. to this day. This was, I'm, I'm a lot older than in my early 20s now. And mm-hmm. to this day, when right, right now as I'm thinking about it, it's activating. So I can okay. actually put my hands on someone I mean, there's, there's some things you're supposed to do to prepare yourself and all kind of make it stronger, make it come out stronger. But, but right now I'm feeling it coming out of my hands just by the sheer mm-hmm. thought of, uh, I'm thinking I need to channel this energy. So yeah, yeah. I, it's certainly yeah. repeatable. That's incredible. Okay. So did you get fully certified in Reiki and start practicing it? Or was this just part of the journey looking to, into what else is out there? Yeah, I did. I, I dove into it with both feet, like I mentioned earlier, I yeah. got certified Reiki one and then certified yeah. Reiki two, which allows me okay. to do distance healing, which I had questioned yeah. about also. Yeah. Uh, I actually went into an apprenticeship to become a Reiki master. And then about a month before I completed, I ended up having to drop out. So I did okay. not complete my training, mm-hmm. uh, but I do to this day uh, yeah. when my wife has um, cramps, um, it helps wonderfully with it. So uh, mm-hmm. she swears by it. Uh, she has a story that she tells one day that she had her legs on me. We're just watching TV and you know, she's laying down on the couch and her legs are on me. And, uh, at the time, her, 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 something was wrong with her foot or her ankle. So I just put my hands over. And Reiki is you don't touch people. You put your hands just slightly above that, the person. Uh, so I started, just started giving Reiki as we're watching TV. And after a while, she says, oh, honey, do you mind not pressing down so hard? It's starting to hurt a little bit. And I said, look down at your foot and and she saw that my my hands were about this far away talking probably you know three inches away four inches away from her from her foot i was not pressing down on her at all but she felt the pressure of the energy wow that's incredible my gosh so you obviously really tapped into the energy world and then where did you take it from there how did you get into even going beyond Mm. well Fast forward because mm-hmm. life gets in the way. And I started, I actually joined the Covenant for a while, Wicca, because nice. I wanted to, to explore it. I joined the Covenant nice. for a while. Uh, I, I really dove, I, I keep saying it, I dove in with two feet, but I can't mm-hmm. stress that enough. I was so entrenched in that world because I was so fascinated by it. But then life gets in the way. Mm-hmm. Shows come and you have to produce them. And um, it, it they didn't get forgotten. It just, I was still doing Reiki, but but I wasn't as focused on it. And then COVID hit. And like most people, COVID was absolutely a game changer for me. Mm -hmm. Um, But not in a way that most people got it. I actually have not, knock on wood, have not ever gotten COVID. But the lockdown forced me to take a good hard look at who I was as a person. And I realized that I did not like myself at all. Uh, okay. I found that I was, I, I had, for lack of a better word, I had a, a crisis of conscious, uh, con- conscience or um, uh, a nervous breakdown. Okay. 
ended up having to leave work for eight weeks, trying to get my head on straight. Um, I found that I learned that I was incredibly self-entitled, uh, very angry. Um, uh, I was not a good person at all. I was, I was a total jerk uh, for lack of using the stronger word that I prefer not to <laughs> yeah. earn you with. Um, I was a real jerk. And uh, I went to therapy I, to the point where I almost lost everything. I almost lost my family, almost lost my job, I lo almost lost everything. And something had to give. So I went to therapy. Therapy was great, but um, it was not everything that I needed. Um, I have an amazing therapist who turned me on to an old friend of mine. It's a book that I had I had read a long time ago when I was researching all this stuff. It's a book called Conversations with God. Okay. And when I first was gifted the book, I resisted reading it simply because it had the word God in it. Mm -hmm. And I'm not at all religious. I'm not a religious person at all. Mm -hmm. I... Um, support and applaud those that are because they've found something, but it's just, it doesn't speak to me. It's not me. Mm -hmm. But when I finally read the book, I realized it was the complete opposite. It was not religious at all. In fact, it was kind of deconstructing religion, or religious, religious beliefs as they were known to be. And some people actually feel that it's, it's, it's somewhat sacrilegious, mm -hmm. but it really talked about the mysteries of the world of the universe, why we're here, what, how we're, what we're supposed to do, the, the whole soul thing, contract and all that kind of stuff. And when I was reintroduced to that book recently after COVID, um, I started reading passages and it was resonating so strongly that I would pick up my phone and I would start dictating into my phone, my thoughts. And I started putting my thoughts out there into the world as a way for me to make affirmations, uh, make sure that I rem remembered these things as I'm focusing on self-growth. And over time, they started to get so personal. I had to take them down because they were super personal. And then I thought, well, if these were as well received as they were, and surprisingly they were, scarily, scarily enough, then maybe what I need to do is start interviewing people that are in the metaphysics space to get information for me and put it out there as affirmation. And if it helps other people, great. But really, this was this this show was meant for me for my own personal <laughs> growth. Mm -hmm. And uh, as I started interviewing people, I mm -hmm. I focused the show on I start I called it the skeptic metaphysician singular because I was skeptical, and uh, but I would I really 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 wanted to believe uh, yeah. from my days back in, in my in my twenties when I was diving into the things I really want to believe, but I needed proof. So this was my way of continuing that exploration. So each episode would be dedicated to a specific modality. One was okay. Reiki energy. Another one was, would be um, past life regressions. Another one would, was uh, auras. Another one was astrology, right? Each one would be a different modality. And little by little, I started learning an awful lot and remembering an awful lot from my time when I was uh, researching it a long mm -hmm. time ago. Yeah. And then the conversation started turning more towards looking within. So still mm -hmm. talking about metaphysics, but now suddenly went from metaphysics to spirituality, right? Now it was much more about how to become a better person, not just in the physical world, but mm -hmm. your soul, how to, how to make you be or have a soul led life. And for that, I had to bring Karen in. She's my partner in life. And as such, she um, was a, in, plays an integral part in my growth in my journey. So we started having conversations together and we had such a great time together that uh, we've just never looked back at that point. Then we changed the name to skeptic metaphysicians mm -hmm. and, uh, and now we're moving forward with that. And we joked because when we first started, we said, we're the skeptic metaphysicians, but now after almost two years on the air, mm -hmm. we find that we're not quite as skeptical anymore. Rather, our audience is really the skeptic metaphysicians because they come to our show to dive into these modalities with an open mind, but not 100% sure that they kind of buy into the stuff. Yeah, that's, that's fascinating. I love this progression because it's often how people really get into a field and become an expert is they have to prove to themselves that something truly does exist or it's being done a certain way. So my audience probably is not going to have much experience in this world. So I want to break it down a little bit more and just kind of go into 
what does it mean to be metaphysical or a metaphysician? Like, what does that mean in layman's terms? And maybe give us an example where people can relate to it. And I know you've talked about auras and Reiki a little bit, but maybe just kind of give us a little bit more. Sure. So I can only speak to this from my perspective. Mm -hmm. One thing that we found through during the show, throughout the show, is that mm -hmm. there is no one right answer to this. And in fact, we say that they're all the right answers because every single path is different. My path is completely different than yours, is completely different than Karen's, completely different than anybody who's listening to this show right now. Mm -hmm. But I can tell you that to me, metaphysics is the are the modalities that you use, whether it's energy healing or um, even meditation to, to a large extent. Um, past life regressions, life after death. It's all the different particular modalities that you use, uh, Wicca, um, Thai Buddhist magic, um, even dream interpretations, uh, the, the tarot, right? Uh, tarot cards, um, mm -hmm. reading tea leaves, palmistry, all that kind of stuff, all those tools mm -hmm. um, of, the, of the metaphysician is what we explored early on in the show. Um, wow. That to me is metaphysics, is that, that the the explanation, the, the scientific, so to speak, explanation of the unexplainable. Got it. Yeah. Spirituality okay. is much more about growth. It's about, so I, I, I kid to everyone that I'm not, I'm not religious. I'm, I'm spiritual, but not religious because I find that I'm incredibly spiritual in that I'm in a constant search to try to improve myself as a human being and I've recognized that me as a human being is who I am is not this physical body, but rather my soul, the, the, that energy being that, that lives inside all of us, whether you believe that or not. Uh, and, and auras and chakras and all those new age terms that you've heard thrown about a thousand times, they're just all tools of the spiritual person on, the, on, a, on a journey of discovery uh, ultimately, our goal, from my understanding, is we're hoping to transcend our physical life and become um, much more aligned with who we are in the non-physical realm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's good. That's a good explanation. So when you're looking at spiritual, you're looking at someone who has a soul who's working to grow and shift and change that. But metaphysics is more looking at reality and maybe energy and explanations of reality and kind of changing that reality. Is that, is that yeah. accurate or you want to tweak that a little bit? It, it, yeah, that, I mean, that's that's close. I think that mm -hmm. the, the interesting part about metaphysics is that it's an attempt to measure the unmeasurable. Science okay. as we know it can't there's no way that they will be able to measure. So my, my early search for that physical proof, mm -hmm. though I got it in Reiki, mm -hmm. really, it, it, that's, a, that's the exception rather than, than the rule. By mm -hmm. definition, if you look into quantum physics, right, quantum mm -hmm. mechanics, the act of observing something is what it, it causes that something to be changed fundamentally. Mm -hmm. So a scientist take take the the early uh atoms mm -hmm. right um there's a thought process that says that that our search for the smallest possible particle will forever be foiled we will never ever ever be able to find the smallest particle known to man because mm -hmm. the act of us looking for that smaller and smaller particle essentially creates that smaller and smaller particle mm -hmm. So the smaller we go, the more we see, well, is there something smaller? Yeah. Yes. There's always going to be something smaller because we are affecting it. We are creating it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Okay. So, okay. So if someone says, so people are wrapping their mind around this right now, how, how would someone know if they're struggling metaphysically to know, to even go down this world? Does that mm -hmm. make sense? It does. Yeah. That, that's okay. a great question. Um, selfishly, okay. I believe that everybody 
eventually will make their way here. Mm -hmm. It is who we are as a people. It's hard to accept. It's hard to understand. It's hard to believe. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the hardest things that I found it, during my turn, so to speak, mm -hmm. was I was resistant to accepting these cockamamie stories of people that were psychic and things like that. But I felt something was missing. Going through life every day, day in and day out, I was a very successful producer. Uh, I had a great family, um, a great house in a great neighborhood, uh, drove a great house. Um, my prospects were wonderful in, at work. Everything was great. But I was, there was something missing. There wasn't, I wasn't feeling like a success per se. Okay. So I thought to look at what I knew had helped in the past, which was metaphysics or spirituality. But I would say, if you feel like there's something else out there that you're not tapping into, look, our show is a perfect vehicle because we specifically make it so that we don't, we try not to talk over people's heads. It is a great okay. way for you to come in, take a look at this one modality. If mm -hmm. it doesn't resonate with you, just, just, just get rid of it. Go to the next one. Maybe that one will resonate with you. But it gives you an ability to, to look into this space in a safe way where no one's going to judge you. No one's going to look you weird. Um, it's not going to be awkward if you walk into a store and say, I don't know anything about this, but want to know about it. It's like we used to call it Metaphysics 101. Uh, it's where you get all your questions about metaphysics answered that you didn't know you needed an answer to. Right? The okay. whole cliche. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's really... That's really how, what, what our show is, was really all set up to, to be. But, but if there's something that even questions, is this stuff real or is this stuff for me? I would say dive in because obviously your soul, the, the, the part of inside you that is who you really are is, is finally making you turn your head and, and pay attention. And this can happen to someone who is also already on a spiritual journey or even a religious journey, but still can feel this part of that's missing, correct? Absolutely. I the, the biggest misconception is that religion and spirituality and metaphysics can't go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. I know certain religions believe that uh, you shouldn't, right? They, they try to, they, they say that these, this type of thing is more led by the by the devil and things like that. So mm -hmm. I can understand why someone might feel very reticent to move forward in this direction. Mm -hmm. However, if you take a look at the Bible from different perspectives, and I'm happy to refer anyone to those types of resources that give you um, insights into how the Bible might actually have been interpreted differently. Mm -hmm. It kind of makes you think a little bit about um, the separation between church and state, so to speak. Uh, yeah. We had someone on the show that was incredibly religious. She was uh, raised super Catholic. Um, her grandfather was super Catholic. Her father was super Catholic. Uh, so was she. And she ended up having a, a, a near-death experience. She died on the mm -hmm. table. And she went to hell. And uh, it's, it's a typical Catholic depiction of hell. Everything that you can imagine um, from a Christian or Catholic hell, she experienced. Okay. But then when she came back, she realized something that was the motivation for her to come on the show to talk about her experience. Mm -hmm. She realized that the only reason she went to hell is because she expected to go there. Because her mind, when she died, her mind said, well, I wasn't a perfect Catholic person, mm -hmm. so I'm, I'm bound to go to hell. And that's what, that's what she did. Mm -hmm. So when she came back, her mission now is to help people understand that you can be religious and yet not force that dogma onto yourself because mm -hmm. she learned that as powerful as we are in this world, and we are very powerful, and I'm happy to talk to you about that later if you want. <laughs> When we go into the into the afterlife, there are no filters. So if if you and you've heard of the secret, right, manifesting yes. and all that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. if we can, if that is real here, 
and there has been proof that there is, which mm -hmm. was hard for me to understand at first, but I yeah. truly believe it now. If we can manifest here, when we are all thought in the afterlife, how could we not manifest exponentially out there when the veil is non-existent? Yeah. Right? Uh, so it made perfect sense. So, uh, yeah, I would say if you're religious, uh, take it at your speed, right? If you mm -hmm. feel that um, psychics are are not your speed, then no one's going to push that on you. Um, but we do feel that religion, Catholicism, Judaism, whatever it is, whatever you religion you follow, that is a path. And what we're doing is we're presenting all these different paths so that people can say, well, that's not my path, but uh, maybe that one is. And it could be, it could be religion. It could be, it could be Wicca. It could be non-religion, but rather you, uh, you believe in breath work as a way for, and uh, to, to reach enlightenment. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but the key is to not close off. If you close off your mind, you say, that's not possible. Then you are a sure bet to know that it is not possible for you. Mm -hmm. It will not be possible for you. If you say that is not true, Hey, 100%, that is not true for you. And it never will be true for you until yeah. you decide to say, maybe it is. And then suddenly it maybe becomes true for you. Yeah. The, the guest she had, her experience is amazing because like you mentioned with the secret, we hear about our thoughts lead to our beliefs, which leads to our reality and our actions. And there are still in this world, a lot of people who question that and don't understand kind of how that that process happens and sometimes it takes some proof kind of like what you went through with Reiki to actually get to that point but to hear about it in this afterlife for this guest is quite powerful mm. and for her to experience some changes and then change her path so that she's helping others is what a great story Absolutely. And that's what that's what it's all about. That is what spirituality metaphysics is all about. It's about helping yourself, but ultimately it's about giving to others, helping to others. Cause mm -hmm. that's that's what we all are. We are, we are at the core of our essence, we are love. We are here to serve mm -hmm. each other in an effort to all ascend, all become enlightened. And um, her coming back and sharing her story helps to illustrate that fact that we really create our own reality and we're creating we're creating our reality right now whether you're conscious or not you are creating your reality right now so why not make it a conscious decision to create your reality that you want and then just let your subconscious mind create it for you mm -hmm. absolutely so i'm curious when you started shifting and changing and feeling the energy come out of your hands and going down this path did you notice any physical health changes in you or were you already pretty healthy and you didn't really notice anything? I'm just curious if that was a, an effect. Yeah, I was pretty healthy, but I did suffer migraines. My okay. entire life I've suffered migraines, but I found that and it's, it's weird because when I, when I give it and it's, it goes along with the, we're here to serve others kind of thing. When I go to, to, to Reiki myself and try to mm -hmm. get my migraine away from me, uh, it doesn't work. I, I I don't know whether I'm closed myself off or for some reason it, it doesn't it doesn't hit me as as strongly as if I'm giving when I'm giving it to somebody else. Mm -hmm. So I've learned when I have a migraine, I need to find someone else who has a headache somewhere. <laughs> yeah. And the act of me giving them Reiki, because oh. Reiki, what what you do as a Reiki practitioner is you channel, right? So mm -hmm. everything around us is energy. So basically, you're opening your here, here come the the woo woo terms. Yeah. You open up your 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 um uh, your crown chakra, mm -hmm. and you channel the energy through you and out of your hands. Mm -hmm. So the act of me channeling the energy through me and out of my hands is also helping me. Is the energy is coming through me, so mm -hmm. I'm benefiting from that energy, that okay. healing energy coming through me. If I try to do it to myself, I don't know, some kind of weird vicious circle happens. It doesn't yeah. work. But when I let it go through me into somebody else, the act of me serving someone else helps me. So it's, a, it's yeah. a perfect metaphor for, for what we we're talking about. That's interesting. Do you still have migraines to this day? I do. I do, but much less frequent now, thankfully. Interesting. Yeah. Do you think any of the migraines that you had in the past was related to you feeling like you were still missing something in your life that you were missing this? I mean, 
what you are feeling kind of originates in your brain, feeling like you're lacking something. So I'm curious, have you associated the two together? Oh, there's no question whatsoever. Yeah. Our, our physical ailments are a direct correlation of our minds. Um, whether it's our, our, some people identify themselves with their minds, some people identify themselves with their bodies, some people identify themselves with their soul. Truly, at the heart of it all, we are a three body being. Right? We're our hearts, we're our, our, our bodies, we're our minds, and we're our souls. And one affects the other in completely. Uh, we actually had a, an episode about Ayurveda, which is an ancient okay. Asian um, medicine. Uh, that they practice to this day. It's a 5,000 year old type of medicine. And we discussed the differences between Western medicine and Eastern medicine. And the way that she explained it was amazing to me because I hadn't thought of it that way. She said the Western medicine was really seen as triage medicine. They're great when you have an emergency, they're great to fix you up. But then after that, instead of trying to find the root of the problem, they instead just give you a band aid and send you on your way. Because right? they've triaged you now, you don't need their help anymore. Yeah. Whereas Ayurveda or Eastern medicine is much more about finding the root of the issue and making a change within your lifestyle to to allow your body to heal yourself. So, absolutely, when you are when there's something missing or there's a conflict inside you, your body is going to be affected by it. And it's going to give you clues. Our bodies give us clues all the time, whether it's um, uh, a headache or high blood pressure or, um, God forbid, cancer, right? There's all these different things that they say stress is a killer. Why is stress a killer? How is stress going to affect you? Well, because our minds and our bodies are connected. Yeah. So 100%, I would feel that, yes. I, and the more I move away, moved away from this stuff, the worse my migraines would get, the worse my health mm -hmm. would show itself. So now that I'm going much more... I mentioned I'm not, I have not, knock on wood, I've not gotten COVID. Yeah, that's incredible. I'm, my wife, my daughter both had COVID. I was in the same room the day before my wife and, and I had a date and we were um, close mm -hmm. the day before she tested positive and, and I, I never got it. Yeah. My daughter the other day last week got uh, the flu uh, okay. until the day before she and I are very, very close and we were together hanging out on the couch together. We we're snuggling and everything like that. She got a flu. She was um, pretty sick for a while. I never got it, right? So there's something I feel to this, that the more aligned with my purpose I am, the, mm -hmm. the more my body goes, good boy, you're on the right path. Keep going. Here's a reward for you. Here's a, here's a cookie, right? Uh, but yeah, I, honestly, I hadn't thought about that until, until your question just now. Um, looking back, I've been meditating now for uh, over two years on almost daily basis. Mm -hmm. And that has huge benefits, obviously. Yeah. But I believe a secondary benefit of my following down this path, of my, my truly knowing who I am and my going down that road to enlightenment, lack of a better word, a spiritual awakening, it, yeah. it, a, a benefit of that is that, that my body is now going, oh, okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's that great. Sense. Absolutely. It does make sense because I see it all the time in people when there's this conflict and there's not this cohesion between the mind, the body, um, the soul. It's there is there's struggle. And once they get all in line, things start calming down. And Absolutely. sometimes, yeah, and sometimes you need a little help figuring out which part is off and even how to guide that that one aspect of you back into alignment with the other. So, but it's great that you kind of took it on yourself and started diving into this world to figure out what, what did you need? You did. You know, if I had known that that would have been the benefits, I would have done this 20 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Hindsight is always great. Isn't it? Yeah. 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 So, so your podcast, so skeptic metaphysicians would be a great starting point for people to learn about the different modalities. And you said the first several episodes would be great for people to learn about all the different types of modalities out there that kind of go into that metaphysical world. Yeah. I'll be the first to admit that the first 10 or so episodes, mm -hmm. the audio is, it's fine, but it's not, it's not what it is now. Mm -hmm. Um, and I was cutting my teeth as an interviewer and things like that. So yeah. yes, there, there are definitely uh, great, there's great information in all of them. Mm -hmm. 
uh, I would say we hit our stride from episode 12 on. Okay. Uh, and all the way, even, even now, uh, we are, uh, we, like we just released an episode on hypnosis, for example, okay. which is a, a modality, which is astounding. And oh my gosh, if you've never experienced it, please, please rush mm -hmm. to a reputable <laughs> hypnotist because yes. it is incredible. Um, we uh, are also on the verge of releasing an episode on, um, it's more scientific uh, it's talking about whether we're um, wave based or particle based uh, oh. reality. So it's, uh, right, we, we do go out in the world and we do sometimes dive into some crazy things like we have touched on UFOs and star seeds and okay. Bigfoot. We had an episode on Bigfoot oh. and we had, we had an episode on reverse speech. I'd never mm -hmm. heard of it, but reverse speech is this gentleman uh, in Australia who passes his time recording things or going over remember back in the 80s when you played your, the records backwards mm -hmm. and people would say there was some satanic messages in it and things like that yeah. well apparently that's a thing oh. not necessarily satanic messages but according to this guy okay we are constantly communicating with each other verbally and non-verbally and you've heard that before right body language yeah. and all kind of stuff but, mm -hmm. but also our subconscious mind now by the use of our tone of voice our rate of speech the words that we're choosing Right now, you and I are communicating backwards as well as forwards. And the backwards messages we're getting, giving each other is actually our true feelings about things. So he has, he, and he played them on the show. He took certain audios um, from, from like, like, like the, the Kennedy uh, inauguration, for example, played it backwards in a certain area. And he, and he, there was a, a definitive message there. And we're not talking about, oh, I think he said cantaloupe. No, no. This yeah. was completely, and utterly clear, no wow. doubt about it, kind of messages. Wow. Message after message after message and all these different audios he played in the show blew my mind. I still don't know if I truly buy into it, but there is something there that we got to look into for sure. That's fascinating. Yeah. Interesting. So we, we do do some crazy stuff sometimes, but but definitely okay. to, to answer your question, yes, we are set up specifically so that you can explore the metaphysical world without having to get your feet dirty. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Were there other resources when you were diving into this? Obviously, talking to people is a nice, succinct, quick way to get information. Were there other resources that you went to when you were diving into the metaphysical world? Yeah. Was it online or what? Yeah. What did you go for? My my best friend with uh, books. Um, if you go to, and we, and we put resources on our show, on our show notes, we have the resources for different okay. books that you can, you can access, but definitely go to a bookstore and go to that section of the bookstore and see what draws to you or draws okay. you to it. Because I found that not a lot happens by accident. And I know this is hard to understand or believe too. Uh, mm -hmm. Believe me, I understand that. But it seems that every time I've needed an answer, I've gone to a book and I've found it. It's got, yeah. it's, it's been given to me. So I would say, try that, try, okay. go, go to a book, go to that the, the section, grab a book that's calling to you, commit to reading it. Don't just read it and go, ah, oh, it's crap and throw it away. Uh, cause, cause you need to have your right mindset. Mm -hmm. If you have the right mindset, guarantee you, you're going to find your answer. That's great. Oh, this is wonderful. I appreciate it. Was there anything we didn't cover relating to metaphysics that you thought was important that we touched should touch on? Oh, gosh, that is such a loaded question. There are I so, know, I know. <laughs> the metaphysical spiritual world is so vast, mm -hmm. so vast. The one thing that I would say that I would leave you with is what I've learned the most. Well, Karen and I both have talked about this, and we agree. This is the thing that that has surprised us the most. It, every single person, every religion, every modality, everything that's out there looks and feels and sounds so completely different one from the other. And they are very, very different one from the other. But at the end of the day, when you go down those paths, you find that really every single one of those paths, every single one of those religions, every single one of those modalities and thought processes are really saying the same thing. They're just using different languages, different techniques, different thought processes. So we found that the most important thing is not which path you're on, but rather to be on a path. And if you don't know what path you're, you're, what path is right for you right now, that's okay because that in itself is a path as well. That's true. 
Yeah, that's very true. This is oh, this is absolutely wonderful. So, how can people get in get in touch with you? Your website. What's the best way? The very best way is the website. It's the okay. skepticmetaphysicians.com or skepticmetaphysicians.com. No the. Okay. Uh, there you can subscribe to the show directly from there. You can, you can listen to the episodes there. You can watch the videos because we do do uh, release video mm -hmm. versions of the episodes as well. You can send us emails on there from there directly. Uh, you can uh, leave us voicemails directly on the site. Um, you can actually even join a community that we have. Uh, by joining the community, it gives you access to a section on the website that provides um, discounts for services that our past guests are, have graciously offered to give our listeners. Um, and and it, basically you're, you're signing up for the newsletter and it gives you access, it gives you a password and you get into it. And, and that's constantly changing. Um, mm -hmm. So I urge people to, to join the community mm -hmm. and go back all the time. Uh, if you join the newsletter, we'll let you know when the new benefit comes out. Um, but, but we found that a lot of people um, benefit from it because they hear about Reiki, for example, and want to maybe try it, but don't know where to turn. Well, this person that we had on the show not only is willing to help you, but will give you a discount to try it out for the first time to yeah. see how it feels, see if it's your path or not, so that you're not yeah. spending hundreds of dollars on something that maybe isn't for you. Right. No, that makes sense. That's a great way, and and it's kind of like you're vetting the people too for your your community. You're checking them out. You're helping people get to know them a little bit before they actually use their services. And mm -hmm. it always helps people feel a little bit better. Yeah, definitely. And, and that's not to say that that sometimes we do vet our people really, really well mm -hmm. for the most part. We try to bring people that we we know for sure are going to bring value to our audience. Every once in a while, we have a show that we turn off the camera. We walk out of the room. Karen and I look at each other and go, that <laughs> inevitably mm -hmm. those episodes are the most popular ones that we have right so it doesn't yeah. mean it didn't resonate with us but yeah. it certainly resonates with people out there so yeah. as careful as we are vetting people we really leave it up to you listen to them see if it feels right for you and then reach out to them if you want to we also we always put the contact information for our guests there so you can reach out to them directly you can reach out to us directly we have to do any kind of introduction um but we're we're having fun, right? Yeah. It's it's all about enjoying. And we hope that the people that listen to our show um, enjoy it too. Because I should mention, we're not very serious. Like we we laugh a lot on the show. Uh, Karen and I have a lot of fun with each other and with our guests. Uh, we take everything very seriously. We we don't we don't disrespect anyone or anything like that. But but we have fun. Our personalities are we're we're kind of clowny. We're jokey all the time. Uh, Karen accuses me of doing dad jokes all the time, but they're not dad jokes. They're just really good jokes that she calls dad jokes for some <laughs> strange reason. Mm -hmm. But so if you're looking to learn about this kind of stuff and want to do it in a way where it's fun, you might laugh a little bit. Nah, might give it a shot and see if, it, yeah. see if it's for you. Absolutely. And I appreciate you taking the time today to talk to us and share with us. This has been what a, what a wonderful conversation. Thank you. No, oh, thank you for having me. I had a lot of fun. Wonderful. And please go check out their podcast, The Skeptic Metaphysicians. Check out their website, skeptic, skepticmetaphysicians.com. I'll have that in the notes as well. So you all can check it out. Go subscribe for learning a lot about this world and kind of testing yourself and seeing what resonates with you for your path. Thank you all for joining us today. Have a great rest of your weekend and we'll see you next week. Bye now. <laughs>